So you were saying you feel like we need to show more detail the deadlift, well, the other common day, problems. The other day it's we a were very complex exercise. Well, the other day we were talking on the forum, and uh, this is why I love our forum, and this is what I, uh, the community that we've created where we get feedback all the time, and you know, people were asking us about a certain, uh, a move like this, like the deadlift, which is a, a complex movement, so we created a video for it. But then a lot of people were like looking for more detail, like as far as like the form breaking down. Right, all the, the little the, nuances. Yes, the and... common do's and don'ts in a movement like that. And I thought, you know, that's so, that's a good point. Not a lot of people teach that. You see a deadlift video and you see them perform the form and they teach the basic mechanics like I feel like we did. Yeah. But then let's be honest, how many people, the very first time you ever train somebody, they walked in to do a deadlift because they actually perform. They're not gonna be able to duplicate it the way that you should. Right. Well, how about, well why don't we cover like the com most common things people screw so up on. So here's the most, the most common, common one. Doug, you slide around you get, you get the side of my hips because most people they go they stand on the bar they they've watched their videos or they've instructional and they, to them it looks like they just bend over to pick the bar up and you'll notice my back is round and what they can't do is they have a hard time taking the hips and actually kind of rotate that just them screams up. back problem to exactly me. and and what they do is they pick up the bar with a rounded back without actually supporting their spine and one of the ways of doing that is taking those hips which most people have a hard time even doing this if going into that tilt. So flexion and extension of the hips, right. most people don't right. have that. They don't know the difference between that and the squat and dropping yes. down. So yeah, you just taking the time to identify, can you or can you not hip hinge properly? So That's by a hip hinge, factor. I use easier terms for my clients to understand. So I'll say, stick your butt out. Yeah. You know, so I'll tell them to stick Push your, your butt, butt out. to the wall yeah. behind you. So you stick the butt out and then you hinge down. And that hinging is more of a sliding back, shifting your weight back. And then I get into that position. Now, if I have a client that can't do this, this is where you use those tools like a floor bridge. You know, mm -hmm. then you teach them how to do an exercise that's going to well, act. Well, let me stop you right there with, go back to the hip hinging move. So one thing that you want to notice too is that this line right here is going to remain constant. So this line is going to remain constant while your angle here is going to change. So I'm sliding the hips He's back. He's also got a straight line hinge. from his shoulder to his hand. And the shoulder to the hand. Yeah. So those are just like from an, an angular perspective, you want to look right. out for those. And things. that's, you know, you get right over, just like you said, I'm creating those straight lines. That slight bend the knees right before I come down, the hips come out. So the stick the butt out, right? And then I'm just coming straight down that line lock into position. And then what's another common one you see a lot of? Well, I see a lot of people, well, two things. Well, number well, one, yeah, they squat too low. Get down. Like, yeah, and what you'll notice here from the side, when he's squatting too low, is he's gonna have to go through his shins in order to get the bar up. That's you don't right. wanna do that. You wanna, you wanna clear your shins. So you gotta come up a little higher so he can come straight up. If he squats too low and tries to come up, he has to clear his legs before he comes up. It's actually, uh, biomechanically, it's disadvantageous. It's, yeah. Exactly. That's a, this is a lot of power. It's less efficient. That's a very good point. That's a we want to have this one we want this this angle right here to be perfect. Any any direction this, any direction this way, and we lose power, right? You're creating so you, more work and you're not efficient in you your want movement. It perpendicular to that floor when right. you go to pull and that. There's, bar and then there's not squatting deep enough. Then there's right. people who just bend over too Almost much. Almost like a like right. a stiff legged deadlift or Romanian. Yeah, like this it. is this is by the way, this is not wrong, this is just a different exercise. Right. Yeah, you have to look at it as a different right. exercise. Right, because it, 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 a real conventional deadlift involves a squat with good posture. That's it. So it's a, it's a squat, but it's also posterior chain. It's kind of a combo of the two exercises. It's basically how you would most efficiently pick something up off the ground. That's exactly. the, the whole purpose of it. Exactly. And another one is the, the slack in the arms, right? Right, you right. See, you see a lot of people, they get over their bar, they get lined up, they slide down, they know they have to squat down a little bit, so they bend down, and now they've got their arms. Yeah, you, yeah, you want to start where everything's tight. You want to come up to where everything's tight, tighten the arms, so I, almost no, like he's lifting the bar a little bit off the floor. This is where I like, you know, this is where and people- he drops the, well, And he drops the shoulders too. Right. I've seen people start with the shoulder shrugged. So I shrugged the shoulders? Like this. So oh, no. interesting. You want to, sh yeah. yes. Oh, oh, I've actually, that's yeah. actually quite common. Huh. Here's another one that I see that's wrong. Uh, would you mind standing up with the bar there, Adam? Stand up with Yeah, it? just stand up with like the top of a deadlift. The top of the deadlift is very important. Oh, mm. now, one thing you're gonna notice. We don't wanna hyperextend. Yeah, one thing you'll notice is he's resting the bar on his hips and that's what you want. He's almost pushing into the bar a little bit. Mm -hmm. What you don't wanna do is excessively arch the back that way or stick the butt out and actually have to support 
this is a lot of times you'll see people stop in this position where they're kind of yeah. up here like this. They never reach full I can extension. Stand so much stress in your yeah. low yeah. back right you now. You want to just push it. Back. You just, right. wanna, you just push All that force it. is going to stop right there in right. the hinge. Exactly. Push your hips into the bar. It's sitting on his legs. Good posture, nice and tall. I see a lot of people though do yeah. this too. Exaggerate. No, that. there's no you need. See, yeah. You see this a lot. Well, and then you also see that when, like you're doing right now, where you're touch and go and touch and go, and then we start losing all these uh, very specific angles and tension and focus in the lift. Well, I think that's an important thing to know, too, is when you teach a movement like the conventional deadlift, I mean, I like someone to, and Lane Norton does this, I really like, and I don't remember where he got it first, is he'll actually... He sets up between every set, Yes. So he'll set, get in position, slacks out, good form, I come up, bam, lock out, come all the way back down, he actually lets go of the bar, Resets again. Momentum just is Action. not part of this. And then picks the bar up here. Yes. Right? You can We're do eliminating touch, that. I mean, there are touch and go deadlifts where you're hitting the floor coming up. Oh, my jam but it's right a here. pretty advanced movement. Yeah, no, that, it's, that's I, I wouldn't recommend touch and go deadlift to almost anybody. Yeah. And not for a long time. I, I would much right. rather get your form and technique down of the setup. There's so much skill involved in the deadlift, just right. like the squat. I want that dialed in before we start playing with all these variations. Right. It's like thinking about someone who do, just learning how to do a squat. I want to teach them a traditional back squat before I start doing all these crazy advanced types of squats where I start manipulating the position of their feet and their hips or how far or the tempo or the speed. Like oh, We want you tense and connected to this lift. This is a grinding lift. This is something that you're going to do with purpose in every little incremental inch of it. Right. And you know, and consider this. All exercises have the risk and their benefit, okay? The deadlift, when done properly, extremely safe. Oh yeah. But there's a small margin oh, of error. there's minute little Very, very small. Once you do the deadlift, you, just a little bit you. wrong, very high risk of injury, it's, which is it's different from other exercises in that sense. Like I can do a curl well, and my form about... can be off and it's not gonna hurt me really bad. Deadlift, so, right. Yeah. Some, in, some injuries, just so people are aware of too, is the shifting. This is why I wanna make sure everything's so intentional when I go to pick it up. And I'm not, you know, I'm not like distracted at all to where when I'm lifting, I have one side coming before the other. And I'm gonna put a lot of stress on my QL. You know QL. what, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, a lot of those hexagon plates you see in gyms, definitely, definitely you wanna set the weight down, reset yourself and then lift. If you try touch and go right. with hexagon plates, you're asking for an injury like that because it, a, it'll, it'll miss shift. Uh, miss absolutely, and actually that's how I hurt myself, so that's why I bring wow. that up. Um, another thing is with, I'm somebody that's maybe um, a little bit, uh, they're just starting out, okay? They're just starting out in the deadlift and maybe they, they don't have access to like bigger rubber weights like this and they're pulling from a lower position in the ground. Oh, right? because they get the small plates? Right. Set so it up on a rack. This is something, yeah, you use a rack or use, uh, some, if you have access to boxes that you can place it on top. So you just start from a higher position because this is a higher, uh, Height than well, than that being would. said, on that note, this is important to note too as trainers, our trainers that watch a lot of these videos, is you're going to get clients that don't have the, the flexibility and the range of motion, and that's part of what's the limiting factor, right? And then you add in the fact that they do a lighter weight, like Justin's saying, that means the bar's got to go down another three or four inches. That's even more challenging. Yeah, it's so, more challenging, part yeah. of that it's is like they don't deficit deadlift, they lack the hip mobility to get themselves even to here. And if I have a bar that, if that has no weight on it, then I have to get all the way to here, so they got to get even deeper and lower. Not that's a lot it. of people have. Have that mobility so working on that that's what maps or the performance strength to get out for. of that yeah depth, and that's right? a good there's a good progression you can set up a rack so that the weight's here so that the weight's here so that the weight's here as you get better with your deadlift and i train a lot of uh, elderly clients and that's what i'll do i'll have them start with a deadlift up here as they get better i'll start to lower the weight to the point where they can get down well to the, that position another great point because we uh, you've heard us on the show before if you guys listen to the podcast you know we've kind of we've, we've uh, clowned on rack pulls before because it, as, it, as an exercise by itself, we think it's lame. It should be like an auxiliary movement or a progression or regression to a movement, right? So like right. Sal was saying, you know, starting with a rack pull with the intention of progressing yourself to where you can do a conventional deadlift. That's the purpose is slowly progressing that movement to where you're going deeper and deeper and deeper until you can actually eventually do this. Right.